Okay, folks, here we go. Tomax Pauli has arrived. The G.I. Joe Classified Series figure that I've been waiting for because I had my Zamot like four weeks ago is here. So the Crimson Twins are now finally twins on the G.I. Joe Classified Series little uh, display area on the Mod Extra Nerd Altar. Why the two of them came so far apart boggles my mind why they didn't release them as a double pack in the first place is even more mind-boggling but i'm not going to start getting into that uh, i must confess i was in sort of two minds about whether i was going to make this video today normally it would be a full unboxing and then a full review doing my three a's breakdown but i suspect well no i don't suspect i know that it's exactly the same figure with some very very minor differences so i'm just kind of kind of point out where Tomax and Zamot differ but if you want to kind of see a full review that includes a kind of deeper dive into the articulation and such like I'll make sure one of those funky link things is in the top corner of the screen over there over there over there no over there that side yeah um so I'll do the unboxing and then just kind of a shorter one basically I'm not going to do a full in-depth review like I would do normally but here he is in packaging. We've got the windowed box there on the front showing the figure off and the accessories. That's been standard for the line um, and will be, I think, for just a little longer yet, but they're moving to windowless imminently. We've got then got the traditional bit of artwork in the bottom right-hand corner of the packaging, again, like they've done as standard with the G.I. Joe Classified series. In fact, I kept my Tomax box because w one thing of interest is that the artwork on these two are consistent. They've got the same motif, same tone. They've obviously used the same artist and there's, there's some Something else on the side that I'll show you in a second. I don't often keep the boxes. That's rare, but I kept that because I thought I might make this review. Then on the back, would it surprise you to know, there it is. We've got, the again, the standard core mainline, G.I. Joe classified mainline, uh, kind of painted artwork with all the characters to date on it that we've seen as standard um, on the other figures and all the legal malarkey there at the bottom. Then on this side, we've got the uh, figure number and the data card. Uh, Tomax is number 44 from the line. And then if we work our way down the uh, data card, Tomax has got an interest in voodoo magic. He likes to collect knives. This looks like he's split his stockings on a night out. And I don't even know what that one is. But his data card, interestingly enough, differs with his bro. Because Zamot, number 45 likes stargazing, likes fist bumping his bro, likes to go shopping, and has a collection of marionette dolls. Then on the other side, we've got the uh, Tomax artwork there with the Cobra motif. It's one of the kind of wraparound pieces of artwork that we've seen on some of the more recent uh, figures like Stalker and Storm Shadow, for example. But this one, if you're a mint in box collector and you want to display it on your shelf, is a complete piece of artwork. It's a bit too tall for my camera angle, but if I just sort of slowly put it all there, it's a complete piece of artwork across the two figures, which I think is lovely. Uh, great pieces of painted artwork there. Very impressed with those. Um, so that's of interest to some, I imagine. All right, let's get him open then. I'm going to go in from the bottom. I've already popped the tape for expediency. Oh, paperwork. Slide him out there. We've got the standard Cobra mainline backing card. I'm getting quite a thick collection of these and probably have to thin that down. Don't need that anymore. And then as you can see, we've got his little submachine gun here. We've got the silencer and the bullet magazine for the submachine gun. There's two little knives, uh, which somebody in the comments on Zaymot told me what they were called. And then I've gone and forgotten. Wait a minute. I'm going to look it up what they told me. They are called Chris Daggers. Spelt K-R-I-S, which is kind of fun because my name's Chris. There you go. Uh, and then the figure himself. Oh, out you come, Tomax. And there we go. There is Tomax with all his goodies. So I'm going to go away, get him posed up with his brother, have a bit of a play, pop him on the display for a bit with Zaymot, and then come back and share some thoughts in a few days. See you in video time land in three, two, one. Here we go then, folks. Here they are. 
United at last. Tomax here on the left-hand side of the screen, Zaymot there on the right-hand side of the screen. You've obviously just watched me unbox Tomax there, and I'll reiterate, as I mentioned in the unboxing section, that this is not going to be a full mod extra review where I go through the uh, articulation and the accessories and such like. I did review Zaymot when he first arrived there, and if you want to take a look at the finer detail review that gets into things like uh, how the posability, etc., etc., then go to the link that's appearing in the top of the screen there right now or head on down to the comments below and i'll make sure they're in the description so yeah this is just going to be about kind of comparing the difference between the two figures and to all intents and purposes of course as they should be because you know twins they are the same figure. They are just mirror images of one another. So aesthetically, you're seeing the same color scheme. You're seeing the same key components. Uh, the articulation on the figures is exactly the same. You'll just notice, for example, that Tomax's sash and shoulder pad is on his right side, whereas Zamot's is on his left side. The bracelet is on Tomax's right side and the bracelet is on Zaymot's left side. Same again, you can see the knife sheaths have been mirrored, um, the cobra symbol on their chest has been mirrored, the parting and hairline has been mirrored. So they are aesthetically exactly the same, they're just a mirror image of one another. Although, just while I'm kind of talking about the hair and I'm above the shoulders, let's take a closer look at the heads. So aside from the uh, parting and the hair, the way the hair falls being the mirror image of one another that I've just pointed out there, the face sculpts are different. Uh, and that's over and above uh, Zaymot's scar down his left hand cheek. So you can see here that Zaymot has got a kind of serious sort of stoic look on his face, a bit more thoughtful, a little bit more strategically thinking. Whereas Tomax on this side here, he looks... Uh, you know, he's smirking a little bit down here. He's got a bit of a cheeky smirk and a raised eyebrow. He's a bit, he's a bit sassy. May, may I even go so far as to say a little touch saucy in the way that he's looking there. I can imagine with the two of them beside each other that despite the fact that they're twins and despite the fact that they are a unit, a twosome that work together as the Crimson Twins, there's a bit of personality coming through. A slightly different personality between the two of them. I can imagine Tomax being a little bit more brassy, a little bit more bold, a little bit more audacious, a bit more reckless in tone. And all of that's just being communicated by a very expertly sculpted little raised eyebrow and cheeky smirk. Whereas Zaymot's a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit more considered, a bit more strategic, um, a bit more stoic by comparison. Now I'm trying to cast my memory back to the appearance of these two guys in the old Action Force, uh, you know, the old Marvel Action Force comics that I read as a kid. And I don't particularly remember a distinction in their personalities, but I do recall there being a little bit of that differing personality thing going on in the IDW continuity. So I'm quite appreciative of that. And I also like the effort that the folks over at Hasbro have made, you know, the G.I. Joe classified guys, Lenny in particular, shout out to my beard bro, Lenny, um, to just give us a little bit something different. So they're not just mirror imaged in the uniforms, uh, even though they're mm, essentially the same bodies, but these faces are telling a story, and I love that. I absolutely love that. That's one of the things that sets G.I. Joe Classified apart from the other Hasbro lines, and from many other toy lines, in fact, is the way the face sculpts have a narrative behind them. They give texture and depth to the characters. So, yeah, really pleased to see that. One other thing I wanted to point out, now that I've got both of them in hand, is that this mirror image synergy, parallel synergy thing going on, with these little personality stories, these little bits of character being told through the facial expressions, has, has given me a bit of a different action figure experience than I've ever kind of encountered before. Because, I don't know, there's just something about the experience of sort of finding poses that is two-figure centric 
that have these this mirror image thing going on and if you're anything like me you can find it quite meditative and and relaxing to sort of fiddle and and mess around and try and get it just so and have i got the eyes looking in the same direction and and uh, are they holding the guns in you know all that, that kind of fiddly faffy bit that's sort of a bit meditative um but because they're, you know, it's not the same as with an army builder where you might have two bats or two vipers that look exactly the same, absolutely identical. There's just enough of a difference to make it a kind of really interesting experience. And I've been enjoying that. I've been enjoying that quite a lot. I mean, they're, they're high quality figures, the G.I. Joe Classified. We know that. Anyone who's watched any of my other reviews will know I'm really pleased and, and over the moon in love with this line. But this extra little element here where they're the same but they're not they're mirror images of one another with these different facial expressions has just given me a new dimension a, uh, an interesting dimension that i've been playing around with over the last couple of days and i, I really appreciate that I've, I've enjoyed it a great deal it's it's not like just getting two vipers together or two you know two alley vipers or whatever that look identical there's there's just just a new dimension a new depth to it and that's that's really kind of cool. I like that. So here we go then. The Crimson Twins, the bros, are finally together in Mod Extra Games and Collectibles Towers. And I'm so pleased to finally have Tomax in hand to join his bro after having Zaymot for a couple of weeks. Um, again, I'll reiterate, head on down to the description below to find a link to go and have a look at the full review of Zaymot, which will give you much more insight into things like the aesthetic, the articulation, the accessories that have been included, because other than the differences I pointed out earlier in this video, that's going to cover pretty much everything you need to know about the finer detail there. Uh, otherwise, if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today, please do take a moment to give me a thumbs up like. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, which I know loads of you aren't, but I'm right on the cusp of creeping up over 400. So if you want to make this man child's dreams come true, then please do. Um, then subscribe to the channel. Uh, otherwise, I've been Chris. This is Mod Extra Games and Collectibles. It's been a pleasure to have you with me today. And hopefully I'll see you around these parts again for another video sometime soon. Thanks. Thanks for watching.